the associate pastors here at Holy Family. Thanks for continuing to join us for these weeks of video. Today's topic is on the church and especially our deep connection and love to the Holy Eucharist. Okay, we're watching these videos now in these cold winter weeks and unless you're one of our parishioners who's fled the state to go south to Florida or Arizona, I think those of us still here in Wisconsin know the gift it is in these weeks of sitting before a burning fire. Maybe it's in our homes or perhaps spearing sturgeon outside, but it's the warmth of a fire that gives us hope. It also fills us with so much joy in these cold, cold winter weeks. And every time we come into our Catholic churches and chapels, we encounter and see a similar fire, perhaps not a bonfire, perhaps not a fire burning within our home's fireplaces, but we do see a small flame burning besides the tabernacle, indicating that someone is there Someone, not just another person, but our Lord Jesus Christ and the Blessed Sacrament, the Holy Eucharist. It's the first thing we see when, after coming into our churches or chapels, signing ourselves with holy water, making the sign of the cross, genuflecting, a sign of worship and of love and of praise, looking up, we see that flame that reminds us that the Lord is here, that someone dwells in the tabernacle beyond our imagination, beyond anything that we could come up with by ourselves, but the one in which whom all things were made, our Lord who veils himself in his most holy body and blood. I think peripherally we can imagine a similar flame illuminating the upper room on the night of that Last Supper, when for the first time, as we read in the Gospel of Luke in the 22nd chapter, when, when for the first time Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body which will be given for you. Do this in memory of me. And likewise, the cup after they had eaten, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which will be shed for you. Those words of institution, those same words that we hear in every celebration of the Mass. And perhaps we can imagine a similar flame burning, perhaps not illuminating the night of the Last Supper, but rather within the hearts of our Blessed Mother and the Beloved Disciple as they stood beneath the cross of our Lord, keeping watch. As these words of institution reached their consummation, reached their fulfillment, as Jesus' body, as Jesus' precious blood, precious blood actually was given, was shed for you and for me, forming the church, these great gifts of the sacraments. You know, the American Catholic novelist Flannery O'Connor from the South in the 20th century as an oft-quoted response to a friend who, when speaking about the Eucharist, Flannery's friend not being a Catholic, said that's a pretty nice symbol. Flannery O'Connor, not known for mincing words, immediately replied, well, if it's a symbol, then to hell with it. If it's a symbol, then to hell with it. Friends, the Catholic Church is the church of the Eucharist. Without the Eucharist, there would be no church. That's why the sacraments together, taken together, these gifts of God's grace to us that give life, that give us new heart and a new reason to live for, ultimately for heaven, but especially the Holy Eucharist, which is in fact the gift of the Lord, his most precious body and blood. You know, it's Pope Benedict in a homily who tells us that for the Christian, this day of the Lord, Sunday, especially Sunday Mass, is the royal privilege that belongs to us by our baptism. So when Pope Benedict is preaching about why does the church require us to go to Mass on Sundays and invite us to do so, Pope Benedict preaches that it's not an arbitrary decision, it's not a symbol, hearkening back to Flannery's words, it's not an arbitrary decision but the royal privilege of we who have been baptized, we're so blessed to be counted in the body of our Lord as Catholics. It's not an arbitrary decision but a privilege, it's not a burden but a gift and in fact a grace. That's why the Church can count in so many ways the fruits of the Holy Eucharist. It draws us to union with Christ. That's obvious, that, that personal devotion and love we grow in every time we come to Mass or to Eucharistic adoration. It separates us from a life of sin, calls us to conversion. It gives us the strength to say no to mortal sin. It draws us to be more faithful members of the Church. It commits us to the poor. It gives us everything we need, this side of heaven, to live for heaven already now. That's why the Eucharist is such a great gift. That's why the Eucharist makes the church. Without the Eucharist, we would not be. 
Of course, that's the same challenge, as one church father put it, to live consistently with Sunday, to live consistently with the gift of the Eucharist. That's what we're reminded of and invited into every time we come to Mass. That's what we're invited and reminded every time we genuflect or every time we come to pray to adore our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament and the Holy Eucharist, our Lord's most precious body and blood. To live consistently with Sunday, to live consistently with the Holy Eucharist. So that same fire that burns besides the tabernacle can in fact be ours, in kindling that flame of love. We end in prayer and thanksgiving for the gift of the Eucharist. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. O God, who didst leave with us in this wondrous sacrament a memorial of thy passion, grant us, we beseech thee, so to venerate the sacred mysteries of thy body and blood, that we may ever experience in ourselves the fruits of thy redemption. You who livest and reignest with God the Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Thanks so much, everyone.